The chair recognizes the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Green, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, once again, I enjoy the preeminent privilege of standing in the well of the Congress of the United States of America. I do not take lightly the opportunity that the people of this country have afforded me. Mr. Speaker, the topic that I will address today is not the one that I had in mind when contemplating this moment. Mr. Speaker, I have been moved by the words of a father, a father who spoke this morning on national television, a father who talked about his daughter and how his daughter had been a victim of bigotry, a father who talked about how his daughter had been spoken of in terms that were untrue, had been led to believe he himself that his daughter could be changed. So he went to various professionals to try to seek help because his daughter was a lesbian. And they discovered that this was who she was, Mr. Speaker. This was not some charade, not some facade, not some disease. This was who she was. This was who God created, Mr. Speaker. And the saddest part of this story, Mr. Speaker, is that it doesn't have a happy ending. Because of bigotry and the way people have been misled, this daughter took her life. I, I literally had tears to well in my eyes as I heard the story. So I'm saddened by what happened. And I'm saddened to know that a person associated with that bigotry may find his way to the Senate of the United States of America. Mr. Speaker, people ask, what harm does it do to allow bigotry to emanate from the highest offices in this country? There's some of your evidence, Mr. Bigotry, those who per perpetrate it. There's some of your evidence of how it can be harmful, but there's more evidence. When you speak ill of persons who are exercising their constitutional right to protest, and you call their mothers dogs when you call them SOBs, you're creating harm to society, especially when it emanates from the highest office in the land. What harm does it cause to society. When you associate the majesty and the dignity, the majesty and the dignity of the presidency with those who would go to Charlottesville screaming blood and soil, proclaiming Jews will not replace us. When you associate the majesty and the dignity of the presidency with these people, you're doing harm to society, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I will answer the question that has been posed. It's a question that I think is a fair one and ought to be answered. And here's the answer. You'll surmise what the question is by virtue of my giving the answer. The answer is there will be another vote to impeach this president. There will be another vote because I will not stand by and watch this country, the country I love, be brought into shame and disrepute because of a person who is unfit to hold the office of president. Mr. Speaker, history will judge us all. I'm sorry for those who find that this is unacceptable and unbearable. I'm sorry. But the country is greater than we are. Government of the people by the people is greater than we are. 
Maintaining and saving the republic is greater than we are in one sense. But in another sense, it really is who we are. I have a tie on that says, we the people. We the people. We are the ones who can make a difference. There will be another vote. I yield back the balance of my time. Members are reminded to refrain from engaging in personalities towards the president.